Mom, I'm hungry. What? Haven't you eaten anything? What about Grandma? She went out to eat. What? I was on the verge of rage. Then I vowed to get back at my mother-in-law. My name is Sarah, a 35-year-old stay-at-home mom. I've been married to Walter for five years. We used to work together at the same company. I've always admired him for his dedication to work and trusted him as a colleague. Working together on several projects, we got to know each other well and eventually started dating. He is sincere, kind, and gentlemanly in his private life. I found myself increasingly drawn to his genuine and gentle nature. Before we knew it, three years have passed in our relationship. Just when I was thinking about marriage, I discovered I was pregnant. It was somewhat of a catalyst, and we decided to get married. Even though the pregnancy came first, I've always wanted to spend my life with you. Let me properly ask you, will you marry me? He said this as he handed me the ring. I was so happy that he proposed properly, and I thought how sincere and dutiful he was. I am looking forward to our life together. I thanked him and looked forward to our married life. Then we immediately went to meet each other's parents. My parents quickly recognized his good nature and felt reassured. I was glad they approved of him. Next, we visited Walter's parents, but that's where I faced a problem. Walter's mother, Tiffany, didn't take to me. Nice to meet you. I'm Sarah. I greeted her cheerfully and politely. Walter's father, Steve, greeted warmly with a smile, but Tiffany just frowned and didn't even respond. Is she upset about something? As I thought this, she said, "So this is a shotgun wedding, huh? Isn't that a bit improper?" Excuse me. Walter and I were shocked by her abrupt comment. Why would you say that? He retorted, visibly annoyed. It shows a lack of responsibility in your relationship. Even if you get married, I'm sure you'll end up divorcing. It's embarrassing to have a wedding and then tell everyone you divorced. Plus, you'll end up just paying child support and feeling miserable. Her words were too harsh. How could she say something like that so casually? Walter clenched his fists, looking at his mother. After all, you've never been good at making smart decisions. That's why I have to. Steve interrupted her at that point. Enough, Tiffany. Whatever the circumstances, it's not right to speak like that about a happy occasion like marriage. Walter and Sarah are the ones getting married, and they're at an age where it's not odd for them to have children. They both have stable jobs. There's no problem here. His words finally quieted her. Walter then followed up. We were serious about marriage from the start. The pregnancy was just a catalyst. We are ready and responsible for this marriage. Whatever, do as you please. She said disinterestedly. After this exchange, I found it hard to like her. Thankfully, Steve helped smooth things over, and the rest of the family meeting went well. We got married and had a lovely wedding. With the baby on the way, I decided to quit my job and focus on being a homemaker. Life with Walter was joyful, and time flew by. He remained incredibly kind to me after our marriage. I got us some cake. Oh, is today some special occasion? No, I just saw a cake you might like and wanted to say thanks to all the housework you do. I loved that he always expressed his gratitude. Walter also always complimented my cooking, and on weekends he'd cooked for me. Tonight's dinner is beef stew. Let's enjoy a non-alcoholic sparkling wine to set the mood. Oh, that sounds great! This looks delicious. He was always considerate, especially since I was pregnant. 
I gave birth to a healthy baby girl whom we named Lisa. Walter and I were typical doting parents, constantly admiring how cute she was. Our love for her knew no bounds. I'm going to work even harder. I want to make our family of three's life better and better. Thank you, honey. Keep up the great work as the head of our family. Our daughter grew quickly, and before we knew it, she started speaking. Mommy, Daddy. Wow, that's amazing. She's a genius. My husband and I were very happy watching her grow. We took lots of photos of her during her first Christmas, really getting into the spirit. My parents adored her, playing with her every time they visited. Grandma, Grandpa, this is for you. Oh, a dandelion, giving flowers. How sweet! She's quite so romantic. Lisa was growing up to be a very kind child, just like her father. She would approach other children in the park and play with them. Seeing her make friends and play energetically was reassuring. Time passed, and she turned five. But then a very sad event occurred. My father-in-law Steve passed away. He fell ill suddenly and didn't make it. Walter, Tiffany, and I were all deeply saddened. Tiffany was so upset that it was worrisome. The funeral arrangement were efficiently handled by Walter's sister Heather. She is incredibly smart and capable, and I have a lot of trust in her. Walter had always told me how amazing she was, and she certainly lived up to that. After Steve's death, we had to start looking after Tiffany. Walter would regularly visit her to check in. Our house wasn't far from hers, so he made sure she was okay and didn't fall or anything while alone. I'm home. Welcome back. Dinner's ready. Ah,、oh, thanks. You look tired. Is work tough? Oh no, it's not work. It's dealing with mom afterwards. Oh right. She keeps complaining about the neighbors bragging about their hobbies, thinking it's a dig at her for losing her husband and stuff like that. She's got a lot of these paranoid complaints. That sounds tough. After work, he would visit his mom, and he looked really exhausted. He was not only listening to her complaints, but also running errands for her, buying things that were only available at department stores. It was a lot of effort, and she would even complain about him being late. Maybe you shouldn't push yourself so hard. If I don't, she'll keep sending messages and calling. That's troublesome. Walter had a senior position at work, so he was often busy with work-related calls. If Tiffany kept calling or messaging, it could bury important work communications. I couldn't help much since I was taking care of Lisa, but seeing Walter so tired, I felt we had to do something. Amidst of all this, something happened. Tiffany injured her foot at home. She twisted it on the stairs and had to call an ambulance herself. When Walter rushed to the hospital, she was furious. "You were so late! I had to call an ambulance myself." What if I had passed out or remained fallen? I might need to care for my injured foot. The doctor said she wasn't hurt at all. No need for rehab, let alone care. Still, she made such a fuss and even demanded to move in with us. She wants to live together with us. Of course, I said no, but she keeps messaging me about it, really driving me nuts. He was clearly stressed. As his wife, I thought about how to reduce his burden. Don't go to her place after work anymore. Let's go together on weekends. As for living together, let's firmly say no. Are you sure? You don't like her much. That's true for you too. Let's also invite Heather and her child. Tiffany might enjoy that. Ah,、uh, yeah, that's a good idea. He seemed relieved. After explaining the situation to Heather, she agreed to regularly join us on weekends. So, 
Walter and I, Heather and her son, started visiting Tiffany together. She seemed happy with the lively atmosphere, being alone otherwise. It's always so much fun when everyone comes over. I wish we could all live together. I was glad she was in a good mood, but something still bothered me. It was her remarks to my husband. You've always been poor at academics. Heather went to a prestigious university and landed a job at a major company, but you. She often belittled him like this. She adored Heather for her success and doted on her son. Oh, you are so clever, just like your mother. Listen to your mother. That way, you won't go wrong. I honestly thought her discriminatory attitude was not okay. My husband's fatigue was likely due to her overtly negative behavior and being constantly compared to his sister every time they met. I felt sorry and grateful for him, enduring this while working hard and not burdening our family. My husband is truly a kind and sincere person. Months after we started visiting Tiffany regularly, she made this suggestion. As a thank you for always coming over, why don't the adults go out for dinner tonight? I'll take care of the kids. What? We were all surprised by her suggestion, but it was a welcome one. I have wanted to have a leisurely meal with Heather, and it had been a while since my husband and I dined out. So we took her up on the offer. We enjoyed our meal, chatting and having a good time. Around 9 p.m., we decided to head back. But when we arrived at Tiffany's house, something was off. She and Heather's son were nowhere to be seen. Only our daughter, Lisa, was in the living room, watching TV while sitting on the sofa. Where's Grandma? Why are you alone? Mom, I'm hungry. What? Haven't you eaten anything? What about Grandma? She went out to eat. What? I was on the verge of exploding with anger. Both my husband and Heather were speechless. What is she doing? Then, Tiffany returned nonchalantly with Heather's son. Oh, you're back already. Mom, what are you thinking? Leaving Lisa and going out? Well, I wanted to dine with my grandson. Oh, wait a minute, Mom! You took my son and left Lisa behind? Don't be so upset. Lisa is five. She can stay alone. It's not okay to leave her alone at night. And why didn't you take her to dinner? It's a waste of money to feed her. I only wanted to spend money on the capable ones. I was furious, as was my husband, and even Heather was taken aback. She had always been aware of her mother's favoritism towards her and felt it was wrong. That's why she was always concerned about Walter, and they had a good sibling relationship. This incident left all of us furious with Tiffany, and we vowed to get back at her. After the ordeal, my husband and I prepared for the next move. Once everything was ready, we made a proposal to Tiffany. Mom, how about we live together, like you've always wanted? Oh, are you sure about that? Yeah. Actually, we're thinking of moving to a bigger place near Heather's family. You'd like that, right? Wonderful. I'll be closer to Heather's family. She was delighted, falling for a plan. We moved to a new rental with plenty of private space. Lisa was thrilled to have her own room, and I resolved to always protect her, especially with Tiffany around. As a stay-at-home mom, I could always be with her. Once we started living together, Tiffany immediately began ordering me around. Sarah, make me some coffee. What? Why should I? What do you mean? It's a daughter-in-law's duty to make coffee for her mother-in-law. Is that so? Well, I don't want to. Excuse me? She was furious at my response. You think you can talk to me like that? Yes. Infuriating! 
Fine, I'll make it myself. What are you doing? Don't use the coffee beans without asking. Why not? If you want to use our food or beverages, please contribute to the grocery expenses. What? You're going to charge me? Of course, don't expect to live here for free. Don't be ridiculous. I've never heard of a daughter-in-law making her mother-in-law for grocery money. Whether you've heard of it or not doesn't matter. That's our house rule. I'll get rid of such a rule. I'll tell my son about this. Go right ahead. She storms off to her room, eyes wide with anger. I made myself a coffee and relaxed. At lunch, I prepared food just for myself. Tiffany, too stubborn to come out of her room, probably planned to eat when I was out picking up my daughter, but I had already planned for that. In the afternoon, I went to pick up Lisa from kindergarten, and then we leisurely shopped at the supermarket. When we returned home, Tiffany was waiting furiously. What is this? What's wrong, Tiffany? Getting so angry will raise your blood pressure. Why is there a lock on the fridge? I can't even get a drink. It's to prevent you from using our food and drinks without permission. That's terrible. What kind of daughter-in-law are you? She seemed too hungry to continue her tirade and gulped down tap water before retreating to her room. I then started preparing for dinner. Right as it was ready, Walter returned home. I'm home. As soon as he arrived, Tiffany rushed to him. Walter, listen. Sarah is bullying me. This is outright daughter-in-law abuse. I haven't been said anything today. Oh, really? Despite her desperate pleas, he responded coldly. Tell that woman something! Shouting, she looked at him. Walter glanced at me and asked, What's for dinner tonight? I replied, Chicken. Great, that sounds delicious. I've also chilled some beer. Awesome. He sat down at the table. Walter, tell this woman off. What should I say? Thanks for cooking? No, I haven't been fed all day. As she sat down, I did not place any food in front of her. Where's my dinner? Why would there be any for you? Feeding you is a waste of grocery money. What? Yeah, spending food money on mom is a waste. Walter agreed with me and started eating his chicken. Tiffany realized her own words were coming back to haunt her and was speechless. You both are terrible. I'm going to Heather's. She stormed out. I immediately contacted Heather and informed her Tiffany was heading her way. Walter then packed up her belongings and put them outside. He locked the door to prevent her from returning. Thirty minutes later, Tiffany rang the doorbell. Yes, who is it? Playing dumb, he answered. Hey, open up! Why, weren't you going to Heather's? I was, but she cut ties with me, saying I couldn't stay there. So you came back here, but we're also cutting ties with you. What? I put all your stuff outside. Take it and leave. Wait, what do you mean? Sarah and I can't forgive you, leaving Lisa alone and not feeding her. I'll resent that for life. And always comparing me to Heather and belittling me? I can't stand it. I no longer consider you family. Just leave. But... Walter cut off the intercom. Tiffany, apparently having a breakdown outside, was taken away by the police. None of us, not Walter, Heather, or I, went to pick her up. Eventually, she realized her mistake and sent a long apology emails to Walter and me. But we were done forgiving. She managed to find a place in a rundown apartment and now works part-time, leading a meager life. 
She claims to have reflected on her actions, but we know she'd revert to her old ways if given the chance. We've decided never to forgive her. She should stay alone for life. Meanwhile, we as a family are happily living together, including Heather and her family in outings and barbecues. I plan to continue cherishing my husband and daughter, living happily ever after.